Hello, uh, I want to thank you for watching this video. Uh, this is the Rolls Battery Engineering Training Series. Um, my name is Steve Higgins. Uh, I'm the Technical Services Manager for Rolls, Rolls Battery. Here's my contact information if you have any questions. Also, we have a Google Drive that we share um, that has training, you know, this, these trainings and, and PowerPoints and spec sheets and a uh, bunch of information that people could download. Uh, here's the link for it, the http for, colon forward slash 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 tiny.cc rules share drive. Uh, if you want me to send you a link for this, I can also send you a link. Just send me an email at steve at uh, Since you're watching this on YouTube, you probably found this already, but uh, uh, we have online webinars available um, on YouTube that you can watch at your heart's content. Um, if you like this video, uh, we love likes. Um, share it with all your friends. We'll be more, more or share it with all your friends, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll we're, 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 we're trying to produce more and more as we go. Uh, if you don't like it, we want to hear that also. We want to hear what you don't like about it, so we can make changes and uh, 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 and and make this content better and more intuitive for the for the for end users. Today we're going to talk about absorption time settings. Um, one of the biggest problems that we see, especially in the renewable energy field, is that people tend to skip over the absorption settings. They'll program bulk, float, equalize, uh, refloat, you know, all the settings all day long, but then they'll just leave the absorption time settings at their default settings. And that can come, that can become a problem. Um, First thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, the, the four or five stage chargers, uh, voltage based chargers, how they actually work. Because every solar product that uses a four or five stage charger or really a two stage charging algorithm operates by these rules. Every voltage based charger operates based on these rules. So the first thing is, is that they're the first stage of charging is the, the bulk stage. The bulk stage is is rising voltage, uh, rising voltage constant current. So when you start the bulk stage of a charger, you know, for example, let's say it's a 48 volt system, you know, 46 and a half, 48 volts, the generator starts, or uh, or you plug in at a shore power, or you plug it into the utility, and uh, and it starts charging. Voltage is going to rise from that 46 to 48 point 48 volt point or 46 48 volts all the way up to whatever you program the bulk absorption set point. Um, for our batteries, bulk and absorption is the same set point. Um, so you set your like for example, Outback has absorb or absorb voltage. They don't have bulk. Schneider has bulk and absorb. Some Matic Magnum products have bulk and absorb. Morningstar bulk and absorb. Um, we want that at the same. So if you're a 48 volt system and it's a full time off grid house and you're cycling that, that bank, you know, 10, 20, 15, you know, 50% every single day, you're going to be seeing a, a bulk absorption set point of around 59.2 to 60 volts. Um, the harder you work it, the, the higher that setting or that, that higher toward that top end of 60, you really want to be, you don't really want to go over 60. Um, when you when you get to this top point of that 60, then what you want to do is you want to adjust um, your absorption time or your float voltages, uh, float times or your uh, end damp settings um, to get that to properly charge. Absorption stage that is a constant voltage. Okay, that's the constant voltage tapering current, and what that means is. Voltage is held at that absorption voltage. So if it's programmed at 60 volts, it's going to hold those batteries at 60 volts. Of course, depending on temperature, it's also temperature compensated, but it's going to hold that voltage at 60 volts for, you know, that absorption time constant. And that's going to finish the last 20% of the charge state. So then, of course, float is a continuation or a trickle charge. And so Really, when your batteries go to float, they should be 98 to 99 to 100% full. And then the float charge is just replacing the energy that's lost over just, just losses of the battery. So if you're an off-grid system, you're typically not going to go into float unless you have lots of panels or 
you're running a generator and really at that point you're going to shut the generator off because you don't want to burn diesel or propane or natural gas to just flow to batteries because you're not really doing a lot to the batteries. So when you complete the bulk stage with lead-based batteries, your charge state is only about 80% state of charge. And what that means is, is that you, you still have 20% to go to get that charge. And so you've got, and, and you have to be doing that efficient finishing charge. If you don't, you're going to have problems. I probably look at records from 15 to 20 systems a day. And of those 15 to 20 systems a day, 95% of them have the absorption values set at default. So that means if you have an Outback Flex Max 60 or, fly, or say Flex Max 80, and it's got 4,000 watts of solar, 4,000 watts of solar is going to do roughly on average around 60 to 65 amps of current. On two parallel strings of S5, or I'm sorry, of, of 460 amp hour, 450 amp hour batteries, so about 900 amp hours of the batteries, that the time, the absorption time is going to be a while. It's going to take time for those for those batteries to absorb all that current. That's why we call it absorption. Um, so the next slide here is this is just kind of shows the different stages. You have bulk, you have absorb, and then you have float. And so the blue line is voltage. So bulk is rising voltage, constant current. Basically, it's somewhere around max. Um, the absorb is is constant voltage, and then you have a tapering current, and current drops off pretty significantly during the, 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 the absorption stage. There's not anything you can do about it. It's just the way the batteries take a charge. Um, and then, of course, float, everything's basically flatlined. Um, this is assuming a minimum charger current of 10% of the C20 rate. So if we have an 890 amp hour battery um, for a renewable energy solar system, because you're only getting three, four, five, maybe six hours of charging a day, depending on where you're at, you really need that minimum of 10% to keep the absorption times down around that four, four and a half hour range. Because if the absorption time is four, four and a half hours, the total charge time is closer to, to seven and a half to nine hours. And you're not going to get nine hours of sun pretty much anywhere in the world unless you've got a tracker. Or, you know, if you've got a fixed array, you're only getting, you know, even in the best conditions, you're only getting about four and a half to five hours of sun at best. So that's why you want to try to, to get those ratios up to make sure your battery is spent in a higher state of charge. Um, bulk, generally 2.45 to 2.5 volts per cell. Absorption, 2.45 to 2.5 volts per cell. And, of course, float, typically 2.19 to 2.2 volts per cell. Um, on a system with an undersized PV array, I'm probably going to bump, bump my float voltage up to 2.25 volts per cell, maybe even 2.3 to try to keep try to add that keep that array pumping as much voltage and current as possible to get the batteries charged. Okay, so I want to talk about the absorption time formula. And so about 15 years ago, Surrett did a study at the plant. Surrett Rolls did a study at the plant on how to determine absorption time because the way absorption time was determined back then is you you started a charge, you watch the voltage until you hit this point, and when you hit this point, you started a stopwatch. And then you watch the current until the current went below 1.5 to 2 percent of the C20 rate for a full 60 minutes. And when it went down below that for a full 60 minutes, you stop the stopwatch, and that's what you program for the absorption time. Okay. Well, about 10, 15 years ago, we did this formula. That's time equals 0.42 multiplied by the C20 rate of the battery divided by nominal charge current. Okay. And so here's that information put up here. So 0.42 is making the assumption that you're going to lose at least 50% of your charge current during the absorption cycle or the absorption stage. We don't know what this is because it's going to taper off over a period of time. If your maximum, if you've got a 4,000 watt array on an 80 amp charge controller on a 48 volt system, you're not going to see 80 amps of current or, or you're not going to see probably 70 amps of current. It's average is your, 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 your nominal current is going to probably be between 60 and 70 amps of current. And so that is the number that you want to use here. You don't want to use your peak. 
you want to use what is real. And so one of the things that I try to talk to installers and convince them to do is that when you install the system, while, while you're in the commissioning process, you put a current meter on the DC negative and you look to how much current's actually flowing while charging. So you discharge the batteries, you know, 15, 20, 30%. And you put a current meter on there, and while it's charging, you look to see what the actual current is. And then you use that number for your formula. Um, C20 rate, that's the amp hour capacity of the battery bank of that specific battery. And so, for example, we've got a system voltage of 48 volts. We've got 16 L16 or S6, S6-L16 HCs. Uh, they're previously the S550 batteries. Same battery, just different model number. These batteries are rated currently at 890 amp hours. So it's 445 amp hours for each parallel string. Two strings gives you 890. Let's say we're gonna use 12 340 watt modules and one 80 amp charge controller and then a 6,000 watt inverter that's capable of 120 amps of max current, okay? So if I take 12 340 watt panels that's basically just over 4,000 watts. It's 4,080 watts. In a perfect world, that 4,080 watt solar that 4,080 watt solar array is going to generate can generate up to 85 amps of current going into a 48 volt battery bank. Unfortunately, the world's not perfect. Um, you know, you've got you know temperature can cause problems, connections can cause problems, shading causes problems, clouds cause problems. And so realistically, that, that, that 4,000 watt array is going to be generating realistically between 60 and 75 amps of current um, when you're charging those batteries. So that, that, that solar array, this is what I just, ex just, just explained to you, um, realistically, it's going to be closer to 65 to 75 amps of current. You know, if you have doubts, check it. Put a current meter on and take a look. Um, so... If I use this as an example, 0.42 multiplied by 890 divided by 70, that equals 5.34 hours. So if your charge controllers uh, are outputting this 70 amps of current, your absorption time is going to be just between five and five and a half hours of time. Well, the default setting on the Outback FM60 is two hours. On the uh, Schneider MPPT 600-80, that's uh, three hours. On the Magnum, and Magnum charge controllers, I believe the default is either two or three hours. And so if you left your absorption time at the default, what's going to happen is, is your batteries are going to charge and they're going to do about 70 to 75% of the absorption time. And then they're going to go to float because they think the battery is full, but it's not really full. So one of my favorite analogies is to compare it with teenagers. If you teach a teenager to do something the incorrect way, they're going to do it the incorrect way most of their life until someone corrects them. And so the same thing with charge controllers and inverters. They are, there is no such thing as a smart inverter that automatically adjusts settings based upon uh, uh, atmospheric conditions or conditions of the battery bank. You have to adjust those settings uh, based upon where your specific gravity readings and your testing goes. Okay, so on the inverter, same thing. 6,000 watt inverter capable of 120 amps. Realistically, it's going to generate about 90 to 100 amps of current. Um, it's not perfect. So on the on the on the charge controller, I'm going to set it for about five, roughly five hours and 20 minutes. On the inverter, I'm going to set it for about five hours and 10 or four hours and 10 minutes. Okay, so um, in both of these cases it's going to be way above what the default is. And if you leave it in the default, what's going to happen is, is for, you know, for flooded lead acid batteries, what you're going to notice is you're going to notice your specific gravities over a six or eight month time period drop off. And that's going to force you, and they're, they're going to drop off. They're going to get low. That's going to start causing imbalances or high impedance cells. Those high impedance cells are going to start calling, causing sulfation problems. And those sulfation problems are going to require you to equalize those batteries to cook that sulfation off the plates. Um, if you get your settings and you spend the first three or four months or six months of, of your system adjusting and tweaking settings to ensure that your specific gravities after 100% charge get to that 1265 
of that 1.265 to 1.275 rate, you're not going to see a drop off in performance. You're not going to see the cells develop high impedance, which means you're not going to have to equalize the batteries. Um, so that's 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 a huge thing because the equalization, uh, while it helps recover batteries that have been abused, the reason they get to that situation is because they have been abused and you want to try to avoid that. Um, so uh, if you, you know, one of the, I mean, I, I spoke to a customer this morning uh, who had his, his absorption time set to two and a half hours and they should have been four and a half hours. The battery bank was five years old and the specific gravities were all in the low uh, 1.220s. Um, and, you know, honestly, that battery bank's probably lost 20% of its capacity over the four or five years of life. And it's probably not going to come back. Um, so on AGM batteries, it's incredibly important to make sure your absorption timers are set correctly because there's no way to check specific gravities. You can do load testing, but there's no way to really know offhand unless you do a load test periodically to check the actual capacity of the batteries. And that can be pretty spending and time consuming. Um, the other problem is with AGM batteries is if, say, you, you leave a bad setting in the system for 6, 10, 12 months, uh, the likelihood of recovering an AGM battery is much less than recovering a flooded battery. Um, so generally, the settings for charge controller companies or inverter companies are defaulted at one to three hours. They do this because they don't know what size battery bank that you're going to put in the system. And so they make an assumption um, and, and put it out there. But then they also say you need to check with your battery manufacturer on what the setting truly needs to be. Um, I want to thank you for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, if you taught you something, great. If it if it if it didn't, feel free to send me an email and ask me questions. Uh, if you liked it, great, like it. If you don't like it, go ahead and don't like it. But hey, send me a private message or send me an email and say, hey, Steve, I didn't appreciate this video. I would have liked to see this, that, whatever. Uh, let me know how to make it better um, uh, in the future. So. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for listening, if you're listening, and uh, have a good day.